today, we're taking a closer look at yet another watch from Militado. So another ultra affordable homage that is simply in a class of its own when it comes to bang for buck. But to be able to appreciate what this watch offers, you have to be able to get past the fact it is a blatant copy of another brand's design. In this case, a Tudor Black Bay 58, all the way down to a riveted looking bracelet. I'm the first to appreciate when a company does an original design, but I also have nothing against homages. First of all, I have no illusion they're harming sales of the real models by any stretch of imagination. They simply target a different audience. And someone like me who really can buy a real BB58 would buy this to try the style. And I, if I really liked it, I would end up buying the real deal. So if anything, homages in my case can actually help in convincing me to get the original. Also, I was not always in this situation. Just a few years ago, I could only dream of paying over $500 for a watch. And loving watches while being broke can be a pretty depressing situation. These types of watches are the only way someone in that situation can get a taste of the design. In the past, homages were poorly made and only the most popular models got their cheap alternatives. But today, we live in a time when just a couple of hundred dollars can not only get you something that looks similar to any watch you like, but you actually get an amazing watch for the money. This thing at $119 gets you a Seiko NH35 movement, a ceramic bezel, domed sapphire crystal with a very impressive AR coating, and an amazing bracelet with solid links held with screws that are shaped like rivets, solid end links, and a machined clasp. The real shocker is the quality in the execution of said parts. Every single part, including the dial with its incredibly thick loom application, the polished hands that are reflect light and really pop against the matte dial, the bezel finish and action, as well as the overall finish quality on all exterior surfaces, including the polished sides of the brushed bracelet, are all done to a very high degree and simply unbelievable for the price. I've said it before, Chinese watchmakers have made a giant leap in quality in the recent couple of years, and more and more of these ultra-affordable brands are spoiling us with their specs and quality of execution, making Seiko's misalignment problems laughable. But back to this exact watch, with its 38.5mm diameter and short 46mm lug to lug, it also wears like a vintage watch while at the same time having solidity of a modern chunky diver. There are a few options to choose from and they don't affect the price. That stays the same regardless of which version you go for. The first one is the loom color. I went with this vintage faux patina look, simply because I find it more fun looking. For those who hate faux patina, they offer regular white colored loom, but on those you get applied markers and either all black or all red bezel, while this vintage one gets a black bezel with a red triangle and painted markers, making the overall package just better looking, well to me at least. You also have the option of having a date, again I went with a no date version to get the perfect symmetry and simply found it better looking given the rest of the details on this variant. Where they show their price point is the fact they use the same Seiko NH35 for both, both the date and no date version. So on this, I do get a ghost click when setting the time. But given the price and the rest of the specs, I really cannot complain. I really like the way this looks feels and wears. And now, the only question that remains is whether or not it will make a real Tudor buyer out of me. As with this, unlike the 1921 American homage, I can actually afford the real one. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed and found it useful. If you did, please like and subscribe and until the next video, bye.